So uh, I feel like deja vu now. Um, so hi, my name is uh, Chris Laco. Um, I'm a uh, leader of software development at Rackspace. Um, in the private cloud, we build clouds for a living, which sounds more um, exciting than it really is. Um, I have, uh, you'll notice by my slide, I've crossed out the word manager and put in leader. Um, and today I want to talk about helping your manager be a better leader for you. Um, while this talk is going to be a lot about me and what uh, my beliefs are and some of the changes that I've gone through between becoming a manager and moving to a leader, um, my goal out of this talk that is, a, is at least one person in this room uh, will go back to uh, work and start asking more questions of their leader, their supervisor, their tech lead, um, even their peers. Um, again, this isn't just about um, a managerial relationship, but also tech lead and a peer relationship. Um, uh, so I'll, like all good things, I'll start this with a story. Um, I remember about three and a half years ago when I got promoted uh, to, um, to a manager, um, and I went to uh, Pittsburgh Tech Fest, sorry, Pittsburgh DevOps Days. Um, and the very first keynote talk uh, was somebody who hated managers, hated management, and um, railed against uh, managers pretty hard in the first 15 minutes to which all of my peers and coworkers at the conference looked over at me and laughed gleefully. Um, <laughs> luckily, um, luckily at the time I was too scared with the promotion to know what I was even getting into um, and it took for a, a good six months for that to sink in. Um, and now that I'm starting to understand um, what it is to be a leader instead of just a manager by title, um, I want to share that with as many people as I can in hopes that they can um, ask the same of their boss um, and have that better working relationship um, with their boss or their group um, at work. Um, so helping your manager be a better leader for you or computers. Um, so helping your manager be a better leader for you or as I like to say, everything I know I learned from Picard Tips on Twitter. Um, so. Um, again, a lot of this talk is going to be about me, my beliefs, and um, and sort of my journey from manager to leader. Uh, I won't claim to be a great leader. Um, some days, not even a good leader. Um, but I'm now self-aware enough to know that I need to um, progress and do something better for my people. Um, so Picard management tip. Know who you really are and what really matters to you, then let the crew know. Um, this is super important. Uh, and I found out, shockingly, that most people don't know um, what their boss or, or their leader or their tech lead um, believes, right? Um, what is your philosophy on development? What is your philosophy on people, um, on conflict, on resolution, on um, work-life balance? All of those things that are really important. Um, I find a lot of people just don't have those conversations. Um, and so um, for me, one of the first hurdles was having enough um, experience to know what I believe so then I can share that with with folks in my group so they better understand me and better know how to interact with me um, and it's a two-way street right ultimately you want them to share the same thing with you so that you can have that conversation with them in a way that um, they require um, for myself I'm restorative empathy developer analytical learner self-assurance belief responsibility relator and correctiveness if you're into the Clifton strengths finders um, things that when I um, learned as a developer, I gleefully ignored. And then when somebody said, hey, you should probably think about being a manager, I went, oh, wait, restorative empathy and developer. Yeah, um, I, turns out I care about people, and, and I like uh, watching them grow. And that, I should probably do that. Um, but knowing, knowing that about myself and bringing that um, is part of it, and uh, thus uh, sharing that with uh, the people in my group uh, and in peer groups so that they know um, about me and, and know that those are my qualities and maybe um, it matches with some of their weaknesses, right? And so we can start to work together like stronger Lego bricks to build a stronger team and a stronger product. Um, again, um, as an individual contributor, um, then to manager and then to leader, right? So, so the first is the title, um, which everybody goes, yay, I'm a manager. Um, I don't know what I'm doing, which is really what they're trying to say. Um, and a leader is, uh, to me, the taking that next, next step of um, getting rid of the ego, understanding who you are, understanding how you want to contribute to your group, um, and, and leading by example, um, be it um, technically or emotionally or you know, um, showing vulnerability to the team 
so that they will trust you um, when they're having hard times, um, et cetera. Um, and so really uh, the important takeaway for this is, is know what your manager or your tech leader's core values are. Um, what are their core values? What are their strengths? Have that conversation. Um, see where you align. See, um, this gives you insight into, okay, if, if they panic, you know, 15 minutes before a meeting, know why, you know, maybe it's because their, um, their core values aren't, aren't uh, great, you know, for um, presentations or they're nervous or um, they're really detail focused and they want to talk about the, the low level details and bigger picture and, and if that drives you crazy in a meeting, now you know why. Um, uh, but the main thing here is to ask, talk, share, and listen, both from you to your uh, leader and your leader to you. Um, and open that conversation. Uh, next, per card management tip. Be the team coach for your crew, not their loving parent, nor their drill sergeant. Um, for me, and my beliefs, what this meant was, um, I hate saying that I'm their boss. Uh, somebody will ask me, hey, are you so-and-so's boss? And I cringe a little bit. Um, I'm only for the purposes of HR and paperwork, yes, uh, but my firm belief is that it is a partnership, it's a different career path, right? So just because um, I deal in meetings and emails and HR activities um, and, and career growth. Um, it is no more important um, than their contributions as um, an individual contributor in terms of code and team leadership and software quality uh, and et cetera. Uh, my job is to unblock their paths so their talents can thrive. Um, um, Picard management tip number three, share the credit, take the blame. Um, this is one that... Um, I firmly believe in um, that I've learned from from my um, my leaders is failure is always I um, and success is we or they right so regardless of what caused the problem um, the failure is is solely on my shoulders either I didn't give enough direction I didn't have an open enough conversation um, I didn't foresee the problems or I did see the problems but didn't act quick enough um, whatever it is um, my job is is to to be that point or that umbrella. Um, and success is we are they, right? Um, if the team releases a product, um, does a great job, hits a deadline, um, whatever the milestone may be, um, the, sex, the success was theirs because it's their team um, and uh, not my credit to take. Uh, another Picard management tip, um, take full responsibility for your crew's mistakes. Again, failure is I, success is we are they. Um, a lot of people will term this the um, uh, G-rated uh, poop umbrella for your group, right? My job is to shield them um, from, from those failures and help guide them to success <coughs> and not let that um, be taken upon them in terms of blame. Um, next, Picard management tip. Uh, watch over the crew. They're your responsibility. Um, so one of the things that, that I had to do um, or realized that I had to do earlier on I mean, it takes a while, right? You spend the first six months as a manager um, sort of freaking out, like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing, and I have, I have people now, and they depend on me, and uh, I have to lead this meeting, and I've never led a meeting with 20 people and a whole bunch of peers, and um, it's, a, it's a, quite the experience uh, for some people. Um, um, but at some point, I, I had to come to the realization and decide what kind of leader did I want to be. Um, you know, and it's not to say that there are one is bad or versus the other, and I think a lot of people move between these two types, but I essentially uh, believe that there are two types. There are people leaders who their primary concern is the people and their wellness, um, and by taking care of them in that way, they will take care of the product. Um, there are leaders who are very technically focused, right? They're focused on some of the details in the project, not necessarily in the weeds, but they're concerned with um, roadmaps and milestones and, and planning and, and stuff like that. Um, we need both kinds of leaders, and I think as, as um, leaders move through their career and groups change and projects change and company directions um, set priorities, right, it's going to be natural to flow in and out of those things. But it's important to be aware that, that you know which one you want to be, and, and it's even more important to know which one your leader is and what, what um, which mode they're acting in in your group, right? Being very situ situationally aware um, of is your leader in um, P 
people mode or technical mode, right? Because that's going to change the nature of your interactions. Um, if you see them stressed out because of deadlines or um, if you see them maybe not in planning meetings but more one-on-ones, right? This is, again, um, a point of them trying to situationally adjust to that. Um, another Picard management tip along this line, once all of their basic needs are taken care of, crew members are motivated by the meaningfulness of their work. Um, again, my firm belief is that my job is to take care of the people I'm entrusted with first, um, the product second. Um, if, if the people are happy and taken care of, they will take care of the product. Um, and so I don't have to be a in the weeds technical meddler in that respect. Uh, next Picard management tip. It's okay to be gentle and kind. Um, I don't know if anybody's seen a uh, talk uh, online about vulnerability, but uh, one of my firm beliefs is to be vulnerable with team members. Um, be an open book if you want the same, right? Um, and vulnerability comes in many levels. Um, it can be uh, it can be standing in front of a presentation that's being recorded and saying, you know what, sometimes I fart in my sleep. That's vulnerability, right? Um, but being brave enough to, to do that, right? And, and with your team, being able to, I know some, some leaders will not try to be stoic and not show that they're having a bad week, they're having a bad month. They're also burnt out, right? Um, part of being vulnerable with your team is not being afraid to share with them, hey, last month was rough for me, I'm stressed, I'm burnt, feeling burnt out. Um, how are you feeling, right? And start to build that trust so that when the time comes that the team members are feeling burnt out or feeling stressed or um, having personal problems that they may or may not want to share or just to make you aware of so that you understand um, their stress, um, that they trust you enough to bring that to you. Um, even to the extreme of um, building that vulnerability so somebody comes to you much earlier and says, you know what? I'm kind of done with this technology. I'm going to start looking for a different job maybe somewhere else, right? Rather than the last day, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm leaving Monday. Um, you know, we all don't want to leave, but the fact that there's trust there and somebody trusts you enough to tell you that a month, two months in advance, um, again, is I think a very important to have that level. Um, and this only happens by conversation and sharing. And it's just, again, all these are two-way streets, um, knowing knowing um, what to ask of your leader in this realm and, and also trying to um, show the same to them. Um, another Picard management tip related to this, admitting one's failures is a sign of confidence and strength. It reassures others that failing is okay. Um, part of that vulnerability is always being willing to say, you know what, I was wrong, I made the wrong decision, you're right, um, maybe I was involved too much, um, I tried to um, change your direction too much. Um, I didn't let you make the decisions or allow you to have enough ownership of the decisions, right? Um, you have to be willing to say that those kinds of things, again, to build that trust with your team. And it will uh, make you a better leader overall, um, just being able to recognize that in yourself. Um, and lastly on this topic, um, when you make a mistake, apologize right, right away. Embrace humility over defense, um, again. The longer you wait to say you were wrong, the worse the problem manifests itself, um, either by team frustration or um, other, uh, other ways. And so um, being vulnerable, being, being uh, embracing humility, saying you're wrong, apologize, apologize move on, um, and figure out how to learn from that mistake and not make it again uh, as a leader. Uh, I said final, I lied. Um, in an emergency, don't be afraid to let the crew see you're in your pajamas. Um, so. Uh, again, if you don't know, say you don't know. If you um, are in the middle of not, um, you know, um, sort of freak out mode, don't try to hide it. Um, use your team to your advantage. Um, and again, that will build vulnerability uh, with them. You don't have to be this stoic um, layer of I have all the answers um, because you don't. None of us do. Uh, we have to work in cooperative teams to, to make success happen. Um, Another Picard management tip, question authority and permit others to question yours without fear of punishment. Um, for me, this is, it is always okay for folks to go to my peers or my leader if I'm not serving their needs properly, right? So if somebody has told me once or twice or three times, hey, I'm, I'm not happy or this project isn't going well or this task didn't happen or whatever the case may be, um, I may be, I'm human, right? I may be busy, I may not be hearing what they're telling me, I may be hearing something else. And so it's very important to let your 
uh, people know um, that it is perfectly acceptable for them to go to a peer, um, whether that's another leader in, in a group that we work closely with or um, my leader or my leader's leader, right? Whatever it takes to get them to a better place and get the problem solved, that's the important issue. Um, it's not about chain of command. It's not about, you know, oh, you know, how dare you talk to my boss without me. Like, that doesn't do anybody any good. And so we, we have to throw that out the window. Um, uh, otherwise, their needs aren't met, and they will just end up uh, essentially leaving or being a bad actor um, in your organization. Um, regard management tip. It's rarely about you, but enough about me. Um, I said most of this was about my experience. Um, but all of these are formations of what I would like all of you to consider and ask of your leader. Um, if, if you've had none of these conversations, um, what, what are their beliefs? What is their style of management? Um, you know, are, are they burnout? Are they, um, you know, anything? Like the conversations need to start happening. And I've seen and been to so many places where there are no conversations. It's a strict, here's your work, I'm going back to my office. Here's your work, I'm going back to my office. Um, which I think is a really unhelpful, um, unhealthy thing for our industry. Um, so. So what are some things to specifically look and ask for um, out of your leader and things that um, I try to do with uh, folks on our teams? Um, so Picard management tip, when a crew member's behavior changes significantly, inquire and investigate. It could be important. Um, so again, be on the lookout for those, those personality changes. Is it attendance, um, deadlines, um, anything out of the norm um, with that relationship you have with those folks? Um, some of this just may be pure stress, right? Organize, organize, organize. Um, I'm a big believer in to-do lists, if for no other reason that keeps me from forgetting, um, but also so I can set it and forget it and not try to stress and remember everything. Um, and I encourage team members to do the same. Um, it's very important that um, both myself and uh, members of the teams provide and ask for clear direction, right? So if you tell me you need something um, be very clear about what that is. Um, you know, it's like, uh, I don't think this is going well, but be very concrete of, uh, you know, I'm working on this problem. I can't get this resource. Um, can you help me with it? Um, and, and on the opposite spectrum, not just saying, oh, we have this problem. Can you go fix it? But, okay, we, we have this problem. Here's the background. Here's the situation. Um, here are some resources maybe you can use. Um, let's talk in a couple days after you've done some research. Um, and no procrastination, no lone wolves. So um, not letting myself um, procrastinate and wait to the end because I find that adds to the stress. Um, and the same way with team members, right? Make sure there's a constant feedback loop um, as often as you can. Um, and no, no lone wolves. Um, the most dangerous team member, um, more often than not, isn't the person who um, may not be um, performing the most exciting tasks or um, not the, the quote unquote rock star developer. It's the, the person who will go off and, and go work on a thing with no contact with the rest of the team for weeks at a time. Um, and same way with, with leadership, right? Like I need to be in constant communication for the team, with the team, for the team's sake, um, because otherwise they will feel like they don't have any direction or they're not involved or they're not empowered to make those decisions. Um, Next per card management tip, show crew members how impressed you are with their accomplishments. Validation matters. Um, so everybody likes to be told um, they're valued. Everybody needs to hear that. Um, and even if um, they think they're not doing well, they're probably doing well. Um, and that will help not only build trust, but help them over that hump of, um, you know, maybe they feel burnout or um, vulnerable, overly vulnerable, or that they're not, um, performing the job as they expect. Um, some ways to, to combat this um, is set goals, uh, have a goal style, you know, are they technical goals, career goals, um, one, three, five year, um, you know, career kind of goals, like where do you see yourself in two years? Do you want to go technical? Would you like to be a leader? Um, would you like to stick to technical team leading? You know, having those conversations, knowing um, and having those career direction conversations. Um, personal development plans for each person in the group, right? So you should be, as a leader, I should be talking to everybody in the group 
uh, on a frequent basis and, and saying, okay, there's where you are. If this is where you want to go, here are some milestones we need to achieve. Um, conversely, again, because this is about making your manager a better leader for you, um, you, they should be having these conversations with you, and if they're not, um, ask them to have these conversations. Um, it shouldn't just be a one and done yearly review. Um, as, as part of that, um, we tend to do um, a six month cadence of peer reviews where we will gather um, and anonymize re uh, feedback from two or three of each person's peers and deliver that. Um, and also regular one-on-one. -on -one. So I'll speak to everybody in the group probably once every two weeks. Um, if, I, if I don't get um, flashed in meetings, uh, hopefully sooner with stand-ups. Um, but these things should start to line up, right? There should be no surprises. If, if we have one-on-ones every couple weeks and I say, hey, maybe you should um, provide longer comments in email because people take terse one-liners as you being uh, mean when you're not, that's just your style let's try to use more words. And then if they hear that from their peers, that's now validation, right? And then as we go into um, a yearly review cycle, we can start to evaluate those. Has it gotten better? Has it gotten worse? Um, did they hear what their peers um, told and validated for them? Um, next Picard management tip. If a workaholic crew member pursues busy work on shore leave, insists that they stop and enjoy their free time. Um, this is. <laughs> This is very important in our industry. I know Ed is talking about open source mental mental health, and um, and and we all um, probably have those weeks where we work too much, um, way too much. I know there are some some places where that's expected. Um, I personally, um, I, I was horrible at this on my vacation. I was still checking some emails and twitters, um, but but typically. Um, Insist that people, you know, if it's a weekend and you see them online on Slack, on IRC, and email, um, let them know that that um, that's not expected of them, and encourage them to not do those things. Um, conversely, if you're being asked to work nights and weekends, um, or put in those over 40 hours, um, be um, be weary of that and question that. Right? Um, there are times, right? We do have times where once or twice a year, as a group, we'll need to push and and get something. Uh, finished and out for reasons, business, customer, deadlines. Um, but overall, uh, we need to respect those, those boundaries um, and plan regular time off. Um, I also um, make it a point to, to have a regular conversation with people every quarter of, okay, have you planned some time out this quarter? You know, take a five-day weekend, plan a week out. Um, hey, I see you're really frustrated and you've been working your butt off for four weeks. Like, take next week, go. Um, it's really important to get people in that habit of not saving up all their time till the last three weeks of the year. Um, while, it, while it's fun to take the last month of the year off, um, it's uh, more detrimental that they wait that long, right? And that they don't take regular time out for their, um, their own mental health and their physical health and to recharge their batteries um, because we don't want them to be burnt, burned out. Um, next per card tip, respond to questions unambiguously and with authority. So. Uh, the one thing I found that I was really bad at and uh, that I am trying to improve is be clear, be direct, right? So don't expect that they can read their mind or that they have all the context from all the meetings that you've sat through um, on their behalf. Um, but be very clear and direct about what it is you need, what the use cases are, what the goals are. Um, again, I'm not saying that I do a great job at it, but I know that I need to do a better job out of it. Um, you know, on the flip side, again, if you're not getting clear direction um, from your leader, um, this is something to, to ask for, right? Don't, don't, um, don't accept a task with, with minimal input, right? Um, ask them right then and there. If there's anything you don't understand, if there are any goals that aren't spelled out, um, the sooner the better. Um, be honest um, with folks about, about the goal and the task um, and expect the same. Um, Again, a lot of these are, all of these are really a two-way street. Um, and so one last, um, one last thing uh, that I actually got on Twitter um, at, that sort of speaks to this talk um, was from uh, Fantastic Ms. Fox. Uh, it says, a note on leadership. There is no need for a job title to enable you to be a leader. There's no required prominence to speak change, to spark change. Um, so again, um, 
while we may think of managers and leaders as a hierarchical chain for HR purposes, um, a leader is everyone. It is all of us, right? So it is asking these questions of our our leader from a from an HR perspective. It is asking these from our tech leaders um, in a group if we're working on a project. It is our jobs to ask these things of our peers, right? It is just important that we have these open relationships and questions and understanding with people that we work with, even if they're just a peer, um, not a tech leader, not a not a manager, um, you know, not your VP, not your CTO. Like, this is across the board. Um, and that's really important that we all start to take leadership as something internal that we're all responsible for because in the end that will help us build um, better groups, better products, um, and better humans, more importantly. So um, before I move on to questions um, that I've ended my ramble, um, I highly encourage uh, anybody, if you haven't, uh, come put your name in the bucket. Um, I have uh, five or six of these to give away. Um, this book by Camille came out uh, maybe five months ago. Um, and I know while it says the manager's path, and, and I've had engineers um, not want to read it, um, the truth is this is actually for any leader, um, peer leader, tech leader, manager, um, anyone. Um, the first couple chap chapters even talk about um, what to expect from, from your leader and, and what to expect from your peers and how to become a better leader. Um, in that respect. So don't be scared by the word manager in the title. Um, you don't have to want to be a manager to read this book. Um, I encourage everybody that read it, um, take the time to read it. Um, and lastly, um, thank you for allowing me to uh, ramble at you for, for 30 minutes or so. Um, some stuff online I hear, have on the slides um, that really um, sort of helped guide me when I was unsure what kind of leader I wanted to be or what the difference between a manager and a leader was in my life. Um, uh, some of these are Simon Sinek videos. Has anybody heard of or watched Simon? Um, he's a very uh, profound speaker um, on, on leadership. Um, and I put a few links in these slides that, um, that I'll tweet out later. Um, leaders eat last, why some teams pull together and others don't. Um, how great leaders inspire action. Um, your why versus the company's why and always being yourself, which is very important. Um, and the top 10 rules for success. So with that, I will open it up to questions. Yeah, go ahead. We have a mic somewhere, I think, too. Oh, we don't get to use it. <laughs> we have a mic, but sorry. Um, OK, I will. Um, so the question is, uh, I'll paraphrase, um, sharing, sharing this information with my team, what do I do when new, new members enter the team? Um, for me, it's a couple things. Um, I have a sort of stock email template um, that I send out to everybody within the first week um, that covers, okay, here's my belief system, um, you know, the sort of the bullet, high bullet points of, um, it's okay to go to my boss if I'm not hearing your problems. Um, it's okay to um, ask, uh, um, ask peers to, to intervene if we need to get a problem fixed. Um, you know, failure is I, success is we. Um, all these things I talk about, I literally send them an email with sort of my entire, uh, I hate to use the word manifesto because it's got a negative connectivity, but my, my belief system as a manager, right? Sort of as an entry point for them to know um, where I stand and what I believe and how, you know, they can start to interact with me pretty early on. Um, and then usually it's, you know, the first weekend after um, rookie orientation and um, a couple weeks of onboarding with their peers, having that first really long one-on-one -on -one to go over that email, um, go over some of these topics, point them at resources like some of those talks and, and say, okay, this is, as a leader, this is what has guided me. This is what I believe. When we interact, this is going to help drive how I interact with you and some of my decisions um, and give them, sort of give them that nudge towards, um, how we can work together better. Yep. So, 
so so uh, paraphrasing the question is if the person is having personal issues that may be affecting their work how do you broach that topic without being intrusive um, I almost always start with the phrase it is none of my business and telling me nothing is okay um, and then I roll into, I've noticed, you know, you've been absent a lot or you seem um, aggravated or um, whatever the case may be. And, you know, I give the choice to them. They can tell me as much or as little as they want. The important thing is that we start having that conversation that, okay, something's wrong. Um, you know, are you burnt out? Um, if you're having personal issues, fine. Um, let's schedule some time out. Get out of the office. Get away from whatever the problem is. If you need time out. Um, from work to take to take care of whatever this may be um, You know, I leave that decision in their hands I just make sure that the door is open you can tell me as little as you want you can tell me as much as you want The important thing is that I acknowledge that there's something different. They're having a problem They have the oppor opportunity to talk to me in detail or not and that they have an opportunity to take time out and resolve whatever it is um, you know and and usually on top of that add a bit of come back when you're ready like you know, if, if you have three days left, you need a week, fine. Like, it is more important to me that you're, that you're taking care of yourself and you take the time you need, um, not that we're, you know, worried about some deadline and, and you're going to be out for that deadline or whatever. Like, again, for me, the personal belief is the person is the more important thing um, on that. Yeah, well, well, a lot of questions. I love this. Go ahead. So I think this is probably subjective. subjective. Uh, the question was, what, what is a high level, what, high what performer. high performer at a, at, a, at a junior or senior level, um, what, what do I see them doing? Um, and is this developer leaders or both? Um, so, so to me, what I look for are um, the things I see are people who are taking initiative um, to solve problems without necessarily waiting to be told. Um, but uh, even more importantly, the people who notice that there are problems in the group and surface those, right? Like, hey, like this person has been out a couple days, I'm worried about them. Or so-and-so seems more angry than usual, you may want to talk to them, right? Somebody who is situa situationally aware of the team's health, even though it's not their responsibility to be situationally aware necessarily. Um, those are s the sort of leadership that stand out to me. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. Yep. Uh, so the question is, if if I knew then what I knew now, what advice would I give to myself? Um, don't. Um, no, I, I joke. <laughs> I, I, I joke. Um, uh, no, I, lo I love my team and I love what I do. Um, my my advice would be. Um, Probably that I should have done this sooner, right? Um, like typically, at least in my experience, when somebody interviews for director, senior director, CTO, right, um, they're being asked to come in with with high level 30, 60, 90 plans, or you know, year to year, five year visions. Um, and so my advice to me would have been, as moving from an individual contributor to a manager or leader, is do this sooner. Like do this day one, week one for yourself um, and not wait, right? Not wait until you're comfortable like managing um, or going through the meetings or sending the emails or telling somebody um, that they have to do something, right? And, and moving from a, a peer to their, their leader. Um, I would have done all this early, much earlier um, because it would have given me more time to, to work on building that skill set. We got about five minutes left. More, more questions? Um, uh, shoot. Yeah. Do you have any problems with how frequently you use the tools that are called tools of the video in general? Um, so the question is, what are some of the metrics I use uh, to determine if I'm a good leader? Um, so I will admit that I don't have any good metrics. Um, I should be more, I don't know if it's a thing that should be data driven. Um, for me, it's um, 
you know, whatever our task is, are we, are we meeting our deadlines consistent, consistently, right? Um, are, are, is the happiness level up? Um, do we have a lot of people taking unexpected PTO, you know, signs of burnout? Um, I, I would say for a while it was um, how long we went without attrition, but now I'm uh, a little wiser and know that that just happens for any old reason, and so that's a bad metric personally. Um, so I don't, know that I, I don't know that I have any good data-driven metrics um, to answer that question. Um, a couple more. Yeah, go ahead. So, so the question is, how much do I know about their work life? How often do I check in, and, and um, what do I know about those check-ins? So um, I typically have one-on-ones, like a 30-minute or an hour if they need it, every couple weeks. Um, but that's really not the extent. Those are kind of checkpoints for, hey, is there anything personally that you need to talk about, anything work-related we're not covering that you need to talk about? Um, you know, what would you do this weekend? When's your next vacation? You know, things like that. Um, but more often than not, we're also talking every day, either in stand-ups or planning meetings or um, those kind of things. So it's it's ongoing. Yep. Uh, probably two more questions. Go ahead. Oh, do we? So the question, uh, to repeat it for the camera, um, is if you're looking for um, positions in the industry, how do you seek out these uh, leaders with these sort of beliefs and values? Uh, I'd say um, right up front in the interview. Um, I know a lot of times in interviews we jump, jump to either the tech screen or you know, tell me about what you did, do you have any questions? Um, sometimes it's, it's being in either asking those questions up front as the interviewee um, or um, you know when they say do you have any questions for us well actually I have a lot of questions um, and start with the leadership kind of questions first you know tell me about your culture um, do you have one-on-ones do you have peer reviews do you have yearly reviews um, you know you know if you're interviewing with a an individual manager you know that is the hiring manager you know what what are your beliefs um, around you know these topics and and how, you know, what's more important to you, you know, the technical aspect or the people and their health, what's your work-life balance policies, you know, put them on the spot. Um, and if, if, if there's hesitation or they don't have a lot of answers, then that tells you what you need to know, I think. Um, if, if, they're, uh, if they go down the, the, the street and talk about those endlessly and then, you know, you start talking about the tech side, then I think you've got a positive sign there that that is a place that is um, going to be healthy for you to, to work at. Oh, I got so many questions. Let's go to the back. So, so the question is, uh, when I'm hiring, do I think that similar personalities work or work better than differing personalities? Um, so early on, I'll, I'll admit that I made the mistake of I would hire people um, based on their fit to the group. Um, and I think that's still an important metric, for, but for me now it's a much less important metric. Um, uh, the problem obviously we have in tech that we talk about all the time is diversity, right? And not just um, ethnic diversity or religious diversity, you know, um, you know, background, but just experience, right? We need, we need people with different experience, which means we need people to challenge the status quo. Um, if you have a lot of senior folks, hire a lot of younger folks and force mentorship. Um, if you have a, um, you know, a lot of um, people of the same um, gender, you know, try hiring out of that. Um, I don't. I typically don't try to hire specific metrics, but why, what I will do is tell the recruiter, "Hey, um, I need diversity, and whatever that means to you and your policies and the company, let's get more of it." Like I want people who will challenge, oh, we've done this thing for three years, why are we doing that? And, and force us to have that diversity of thought more than anything else. Uh, because that's really what's gonna drive the strength of the team and, and break us out into better solutions. Um, and not do things the way we've always done it. 
Okay, more questions? Yeah. Um, Yeah, I think, a two, uh, so the question is, um, with lone wolves, some people work better alone, um, and how do you foster that um, versus um, people who need to work with the team, uh, if I understand the question correctly. Um, I think it's, step one is obviously recognizing who those people are um, and make sure that they have the relevant work. Um, and really, it's about setting expectation, right? So if the people really are, um, need to work alone, that's fine, but they also need to over-communicate, right? It's almost like being a, a remote worker. Um, I, so Rackspace is in San Antonio. Um, some of my team is in San Antonio. Some of the team is spread across the US. Uh, I live in Ohio. Um, and so part of being remote is you have to over-communicate, right? Because we're not sitting next to each other. We don't get to see our successes and our failures and, and hear about them firsthand. Um, and, I, and it's the same way, I think, with Lone Wolf. There are people who need quiet. Um, who need to work alone, who need, need that time to focus, who don't need context switches getting in their way. Um, but you need to identify who those people are, give them the space to do it, but ensure that they're also following that up with communication um, because that's their responsibility. If, if you need that time alone to focus, you need to over communicate with the team. Okay, here's the progress I made today. Here's the problems I'm facing. Here's what I'm gonna work on tomorrow. Um, because without that, um, you know, you may find yourself three, four weeks down the road with no progress or the wrong progress or a solution that uh, was to the wrong problem. So, yep. So the question is, how do I manage conflicting personalities and people? Um, so uh, it depends on the conflict and the trust level that I have. Um, established with both of those people, right? Um, if somebody trusts you enough to say, um, hey, this person I don't really get along with, um, then you can have that conversation of, okay, well, why is it? You know, is it something they're doing? Is it their communication style? Let's look at their top five, you know, strengths finders. Um, like maybe they're a communicator, maybe they're woo, right? And and you're not all about the communication of the woo, you wanna go lone wolf, right? And that's that's the, the thing that's conflicting, right? Um, um, if if there isn't that trust level where somebody will come to me about the problem, then you just have to start to drive that through, you know, one-on-ones and start to say, hey, I noticed a couple conversations and there was a little bit of tension here. Tell, tell me about that situation and what frustrates you and have that conversation with the other person without letting them sort of know that that's what you're doing with everybody. Um, and then, you know, be able to drive that to, to some sort of progress or fruition. Uh, so, so I, the question, sorry, and I cut out for a couple words there, was, um, was what do you do with, with managers or leaders who maybe aren't receptive to that, the feedback? Um, try, try again, <laughs> keep trying. Um, you know, again, at least for me, this is, um, this is that part of, you know, feel free to always go around me and to my boss or appear in another department that I have a working relationship because sometimes, um, you know, that, that ego may get in the way, they may not be hearing it correctly. Um, and so trying that other avenue, um, it may be a best bet to where I can have, you know, let's say the leader from support come over to me and say, hey, one of your, one of your folks came to me and, and said that, you know, they're frustrated with the feedback they got from you or they're having this problem with, X, Y, or Z, um, you know, and sometimes, you know, just like um, developers may not believe that, that uh, there's something they should work on until they hear it from their peers, it's the same way with leaders, right? We have the same problems, we're the same humans. Um, sometimes we need to hear it from a peer instead of um, a person who we have a, um, a hierarchical relationship with. Yeah, four minutes, any other questions? No one? All right. Well, thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Um, I have the link up. <laughs>